said to his disciples, have the people sit down and give them something to eat. Philip must have been an accountant. Who among you is an accountant? I am an accountant by profession. He must, Philip must answer it immediately. He started counting the cost. He started counting the cost. He said, uh, he, he looked at the number of people and he said to the Lord, but Lord, it would take eight months wages to feed all these people. And then, and then Andrew actually said, Lord, there is a, a young boy here with five loaves and two fish. They put, took the five loaves and the two fish to the Lord. The Lord blessed the loaves and the fish. And then he gave them to his disciples, to the 12 apostles. And the 12 apostles started to distribute. And the next thing you know, 5,000 men were fed and they had 12 basketfuls left over. Meaning to say that the 12 apostles came back with leftovers. Now, let me ask you a question. Where did the actual miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish take place? Where did it take place? Where was it happening? Is it in the hands of the Lord or in the hands of the disciples? And to the Lord. I love it when you have some people say it's the hands of the Lord, some of it the hands of the disciples. Again, I ask the question, where was the actual miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish? Where was it happening? Is it in the hands of the Lord or in the hands of the disciples? In the hands of the disciples. This is very encouraging for us. Why? Because we are the disciples. And the Lord would send hungry people to you. People that are not just hungry for food, but hungry for a, the word of the Lord, or hungry for friendship, hungry for a word of encouragement, hungry for somebody that would spend time with them. The God would send hungry people to you. When He sends hungry people to you, do not count the cost but the little that you have give it first to the Lord and the Lord blesses it and then he gives it back to you and the next thing you know he uses you for the blessing of other people now I have a personal example to share with you when I was just a brand brand new tour guide I did not used to guide in a bus I had a van and I guided the congresswoman of Davao who is the congresswoman of Davao, Thelma Almario. And I guided her with her daughters and also her secretaries. And I spent time with them for nine days in a private van. After touring with them all around Israel, they left and they went to Egypt. When they went to Egypt, they told about their experience here in the Holy Land. And the next thing you know is that I got a phone call from the consul of the Philippines to Egypt. And uh, she came uh, here, she called me, and she said to me, Exi, I have heard of you from Mrs. Almario, and I am here on a business trip here in Israel. Could you please take me around and, uh, and tour me around just like you did with Mrs. Almario? I immediately said to him, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm sorry, I do not have the time. Tomorrow I am very busy, the whole day I am very busy, and I do not have the time to go out to guide. And so, why is it that I refuse? Because that I have tomorrow is the only day that I have to prepare for my first American group. Uh, the day after I have my first American group, 48 of them in a bus. And I knew I had needed the whole day to review everything that I have learned in tour guiding course. I used to get very, very confused. I did not know if the Crusaders came first, or the Byzantines, or the Turks and the British. Who came first? I used to get very confused. People would ask me, Exi, how high is Jerusalem? 
I say, very high. <laughs> How deep is the Dead Sea? I say, very deep. <laughs> and then somebody would ask me, actually, what is the name of that mountain over there? I say, Har Loyodat. Har means mountain, Loyodat means, I don't know. <laughs> And so I used to answer that way, and I knew I cannot do the same thing with the American group. And so I, so I, I needed that one full day. I knew I needed that one full day to review everything that I have learned in tour guiding course. And so I said to the council, I'm sorry, Po, I don't have the time. The next thing you know is that he, she called me again. She called me, takes it kind of half a day. Maybe half a day, and then I told her, Consul, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a, a new guide. And there are veteran guides, a lot of veteran guides here in Israel. Maybe, I, let me find you one. I said, okay, Exy, find me one. And so I tried to look for a veteran guide for her. And then she called again the third time. The third time she said, she says to me, no, Exy, I want you to be my when she said that to me, it's not only her voice that I heard, but I heard the Holy Spirit say, go. And so I, I said, uh, I, the Blessed Sacrament, they said, would you like to pray? And, and, so, and so she she said, there's the Blessed Sacrament right here in this particular church. We I told her where the Blessed Sacrament is, and we entered the Blessed Sacrament room, and it was there that the consul started weeping like a child. I did not know that this official of our government that is so all together in the outside is actually very broken in the inside. And so she was crying here like a child and she was just unloading before the Lord. And I knew that the Lord met her got up I gave her a hug after after that we, I took her to the airport and then I went back home when I got home I saw the laundry <laughs> I saw that my children were hungry started cooking and at night before I went to sleep God gave me what you call leftover energy leftover energy that as I was opening the notes then God gave me such clarity of mind that I was able to take in as much as possible and by the next day, I was ready for my tour group. Okay, that is my personal sharing with you. Now, I share that with you because again, I tell you, you did not come here because you chose me. God chose you. And again, when you go back home, God would bring hungry people to you. People that are hungry for a word of wisdom, for a word of encouragement, for a word of, of just having time with them. You know, we are the hands and the feet of our Lord. We are His body. And there are so many hurting people around. If we can only use our arms to just comfort somebody. Now the the, uh, the thing is, uh, this is what I, uh, uh, there's something that I have read, I, I guess you have heard of Rick Warren, and he said this, this that I hold on to, the best way to live is to love. The best way to love is to give. And the best thing we can give is time. time. Time is something that we can always give to anybody. And that are, we are so busy with many other things that we fail to recognize somebody who is hurting along the way. For somebody that, that needs a friend. And so the, the, remember this again, that remember the multiplication of the loaves and fish, the Lord wants to use us wants to use us as the ones to be sharing his love in this broken world in this broken world and to use uh, to, the, to to respond to respond to the needs of the people the multitude that god would send you that is hungry for god's love 
Now, we are here at this church. The church that we will be visiting is called the Church of the Multiplication of the Loaves and Fish. The first church was built in 350 AD. That is during the Byzantine period. A lot of the Jews were becoming believers in Jesus during that time. And then a bigger church was built here at 480 AD. <coughs> but that bigger church was destroyed by the Persians. And this, the church was under ruins for many years until 1932. In 1932, they uncovered the floor of the second church. And then it was only in 1982 that this church was consecrated. This church is actually a Benedictine church and there are Benedictine nuns here from the Philippines. Okay, now we're gonna go inside and I think I'll continue explaining inside the church itself. Okay, so that is the second church, which is 480 AD. And then when we go to the front of the church, on the left side over here, the front of the church, the, the, to the right, yes, the, the uh, artist is an Egyptian Coptic, the one who designed the floor and also the, uh, the mosaic floor. is an Egyptian Coptic, and so he wanted to put in the Nile River. <coughs> in the mosaic floor. So on the right side, there is the Nile River. No, there's the Nile River. If the Nile River is high that here, the taxation that here is high. If the Nile River is long, then the fabric is also low. Why? Because the main source of production. 